talk about function arithmetic today and what is function arithmetic? Well, it's adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, exponentiating. You already know how to do that because we're sticking to polynomials. And in beginning algebra, um, that's what you dealt with a lot is uh, polynomials. So we're doing it with polynomials and we will broaden the scope later, but you get the ideas. Something that's, we're going to take little baby steps into composition of functions and finding inverses as well. Okay, sounds more scary than it is. All right, so let's get started. We're being told here that there are two functions. There's the function f of x and what it equals, and the function g of x and what it equals. And then we're going to evaluate f of x and g of x for x equals negative 4, and then we're going to add f of negative 4 to g of negative four. All right, we're gonna do it in steps. Here they are. All right, f of x equals negative nine x plus 17. And g of x equals x squared plus nine. Neither of those is too scary. Now, it says here, this is the symbol, f of negative four is the symbol for evaluating f of x for x equals negative four. This part is just a symbol. All right, what it means is stick a negative four into the x in for the x, in other words, substitute it. And then we're also being asked to find g of x, so g of negative four is going to be, put a negative four in for the x squared plus nine. All right, well, that means that f of negative four is going to equal negative nine times negative four is positive 36 plus 17. And that's going to equal, let's see, six plus seven is 13, carry the one. One plus three is four, plus one is five. So that should be 53. Tell me if I'm wrong. All right, g of negative four is going to equal, negative four squared is going to, is, is negative four times negative four, which is positive 16 plus nine equals 25. So now we know what f of negative four and g of negative four are. So I'm going to come on over here, and under f of negative four, I'm going to write 36. And under g of negative four, I'm going to write, no, 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 it's 53. 53, right here. Oops. Okay, 53. 53 plus 25. Three plus five is eight. Five plus two is seven. I did include the answers here, so my answer agrees with their answer. And this is what you would write in the blue answer box in my math lab, right there, 78. We have added and evaluated two functions. Now you can see that all, all this is, 
is getting used to the function notation. You're not doing anything new, really. Now here we're going to be multiplying f of x evaluated for x equals 7 times g of x evaluated for x equals 7. All right, so we're going to perform basically the same steps. f of x equals negative 2x plus 6. So f of 7 is going to equal negative 2 times 7 plus 6, which will be negative 14 plus 6, which will be, since 6 plus 8 is 14, negative 14 plus 6 is going to be negative 8. Now g of x equals x squared plus 8. So g of 7 is going to equal 7 squared plus 8. 7 squared is 49. 7 times 7. So that's going to be 57. Now, all right, so I know that f of 7 is negative 8. g of 7 is 57. And I, like you, am going to use the calculator. Negative, hit the negative button down here. Negative 8 times 57. I get negative 456. And that is what you're going to put in the answer box in my math lab. Let me save. All right, now we're going to subtract functions. We're being asked to evaluate f of x and g of x for x equals zero. Well, ooh, I'd rather do that in black. f of x equals negative 4x plus 3. So f of 0 is going to equal negative 4 times 0 plus 3. Since negative 4 times 0 is 0, boom f of zero is going to equal three. Now g of x is x squared plus 17. g of zero is going to be zero squared plus 17. If you've had calculus, you know that's an indeterminate form, but we still count it as zero. At least on this level for this operation. So G of zero is 17. Notice it's only the zero that, uh, it's only the X that equals zero. OK, so I'm going to come back over here and F of zero is three minus G of zero, which is 17. And you can put that in the calculator if you want. But what I'm doing mentally is I'm saying 17 minus three is 14. 
but the bigger number is negative, so the answer is negative. That's a lot of blah, blah, blah to most people, so 3 minus 17, enter, is negative 14. Another way to look at, the, look, at, look at it is in your bank account. Suppose you have $3, but you write a check for $17. Before all the other charges, that throws you into a deficit of $14. That's a bad thing. You don't want to know that. All right, so I neglected to put the answers on these, and I apologize. Let us assume that the answer is negative 14. Yep, okay, double checking. Now we're going to divide. This can be difficult if you're just dealing with polynomials. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, but we're evaluating the functions for numbers and that makes it a lot easier. All right, so f of x is negative 13 x plus 3. Now, f of 7, we're evaluating for x equals 7 here. That means the x over here turns into a 7. Well, I'm lazy. Let's put it in the calculator. Negative 13 times 7 plus 3. It's negative 88. So f of 7 equals negative 88. Now, g of x equals, again, x squared plus 17. g of 7 <clears throat> is 7 squared plus 17. Let's look at how you would do that in the calculator. That's a positive 7. A positive seven so I would take 7 and then hit the x squared button. And notice how that makes it x squared. Let me make this bigger for you. No. Maybe not. OK, fine. Um, F of 7 is negative 88. G of 7. is going to be 49 plus 17. So let's do it the old baby way. 49 plus 17, you can do that too. And I get 66. Let's see what the calculator gives me. Same thing, 66. Now, what we're being asked to find here is f of 7 slant g of 7, and what that means, of course, is f of 7 over g of 7, which is going to be negative 88 over... Uh, 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 negative 88 over positive 66. Now, I definitely vote for the calculator, and I'm wondering why it won't give me the view I want. Oh, all right. All right, I'm going to hit this. And then what do I want? This. 
this, this. Okay, I just have to figure this out later. So let's go back to just the calculator. I just worry you can't see it. But we're going to have to just deal, okay? Oh, what do I know first? Two goes into 88. This is how I would do it if I were doing this by hand. And two goes into 66. That would give me negative 44 over 33. And then I know that 11 goes into 44, so I would divide, and, and 11 goes into 33. So I would divide both of these by 11, and that would give me negative four over positive three. So that would be negative four thirds. Let's do it with math frac. Negative 88. No, negative eight, eight divided by six, six. I'm going to math, frac, enter. And there I have negative four thirds. I'll have this fixed by tomorrow, I hope. Okay, so what did we do? This calls for f of 7 over g of 7. So I evaluated f of x for 7 and got negative 88. I evaluated g of x for 7 and got positive 66. So that gave me negative 88 over 66. And I think it's rather instructive that I did it by hand, uh, but I also did it on the calculator. Okay, as always, please feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question or a comment. All right, now we're going to do all this same stuff again. But we're going to take a slightly more complicated approach because we're not being asked to evaluate the functions for a number. We're leaving them with X's. So, watch carefully. We've got F of X equals negative 5X plus 3. Let me see if I can make this bigger. kind of granular, but I think it's easier to see on the screen. F of X equals negative 5X plus 3. G of X equals X squared minus 3. So we're being asked to take, <clears throat> to take G and subtract F of X. So let's talk about what that means. G minus F in parentheses of x is just a shorthand way of writing g of x minus f of x. Okay, so I'm going to come down here and write it here. g of x minus f of x is going to be g of x, which is x squared minus 3, minus f of x, which is negative 5x plus 3. And another way of thinking about this is there's really an invisible 1 in front of this set of parentheses. And there's really an invisible one in front of this set of parentheses, but there's also a minus sign in front. So the way you want to think about this is as follows. 
Take the minus sign, move it over to the one. like that, and then add them. That's the way we're going to handle this, and that's the way you should mentally handle subtraction of polynomials, which is what this is. All you're doing is subtracting polynomials. So one times x squared minus three is x squared minus three plus Negative one times negative five X is positive five X. Negative one times positive three is negative or minus three. Now we're going to combine like terms and write the polynomial in descending order, which means write it in descending order of exponents. Let me point out that you have an invisible exponent of one right here. So here's exponent two, exponent one, and then no exponent that you can see, but I'll explain that in a minute. We will have x squared plus five x minus three and then minus another three so we're subtracting six. Now let's take a minute to talk about degrees of terms. Here the exponent is two, here the exponent is one. All right, here, this is called a degree two term. It's also called a quadratic term. This is a degree one term. It's also called a linear term. This is a constant. Notice there is no X over here. Constants all have degree zero. Oops, I wrote it the wrong way around though. I try to be consistent, but I am not a very consistent person. All constants have degree zero. So we've written our polynomial in descending degrees, two, one, zero. That's what descending order means. So let me make one of these things and call this descending order. And this also you covered in beginning algebra. But if you don't remember it, here it is. OK. Now we're being asked to add. Two functions and here they're polynomials because you've dealt with polynomials before I wanted to make sure that when you're adding functions, you're adding polynomials, so it would be something you had seen before, even if it's been a few years. We have some people in this class who are still in high school, some people who are right out of high school, and other people who haven't been in high school for a really long time. Okay, so. That's what the review is for. Even people who took Algebra 1 last year might not remember everything they learned. So review is called for. Okay, 
So f plus g of x means f of x plus g of x. We're told that f of x is negative 2x plus 3. And g of x is x squared plus 3. Imagine a positive 1 in front of both of these so that 1 times negative 2x plus 3 is just negative 2x plus 3. Copy the plus sign. 1 times x squared plus 3 is x squared plus 3. And then write this in descending order. x squared minus 2x plus 3 plus 3 is plus 6. And ta-da, we're done. This is what you write in the answer box. And I should have gone back up here and put that in a blue square or a blue box because that's what the answer boxes look like in my math lab. Although somewhat neater, I admit, than my handwriting. I have a question. Yes, good. Uh, so since we did this one with both positive ones and this equation, how come we can determine the other one from our last previous problem that it was one with a negative one? How can we determine if it's a negative or a positive? Very good question. Thank you. Up here. OK, let me st let me let me come down here. We're going to have x minus 3, oh, x squared minus 3, uh, minus negative 5x plus 3. Unless you have another number in front of the parentheses already and you've already got something in parentheses, you're always going to have a, an, you know, you're going to imagine a positive one in front of the parentheses, okay? But where the negative one came from was the fact that there's a negative sign in front of the one. So what you have to think of is, okay, well, I'll distribute one here. One times x squared is x squared. One times minus three is minus three. And then, Imagine that this is a negative one, negative one times negative five X, negative one times positive three. So negative times negative is positive, and that's what gives you the positive five X. Negative times positive is negative, and that's what gives you the minus three. That's where the minus sign came from. I just, I didn't know how hard it would be for you to imagine that that negative one, you know, if it's out here, I wanted you to know that the, the minus sign um, at least temporarily makes this a negative one, long enough for you to distribute into the second parentheses there. Does that help? That helps a lot, thank you. Good. Anybody else? OK. So we've done that and we've done that. Now we're going to do division again, but this time we don't substitute a number for X. When they write F slash G and notice these are capitals. Well, these have to match. These are capitals. I mean, it, it always works that way. 
Anyway, what they're asking for is F, capital F of X over capital G of X. And the capitals have no special meaning, except that that's what the authors chose to call these functions. This is going to give you X squared minus three over one minus X. And that's as far as you can go. You can't go any farther. One minus X is not a factor of X squared minus three. So um, there really is not a whole lot more you can do with this. I know some people here know partial fraction decomposition. We don't go into that. That makes life way too hard. You'll do that in calculus. But uh, just in college algebra, this is the way we leave the answer. Now, I want to show you what if, what if, what if, what if, we had had f of x, I'll make it little here, f of x equals x squared minus nine. And g of x equals x minus three. What if we had had that problem? And what if what they ask us to do is take f of x over g of x? Then you would have had, let me roll this up to the top. Then you would have had <coughs> x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. But x squared minus nine is factorable. Remember factoring. X plus three times x minus three. This is um, a difference that is a subtraction of perfect squares. When you have a perfect square minus a perfect square, you can factor into conjugates. That's what this is called. So you would factor the top like this. You would factor the bottom. Well, you can't factor the bottom. You would just write it. But then you would notice, aha, this x minus three cancels this x minus three. So your answer would be just the remaining x plus three. Technically, x plus 3 over 1, because your um, denominator had canceled, but then you would say to yourself, well, x plus 3 over 1 is just x plus 3. In a week or two, we're going to go through a, a brief review of, a brief review of factoring. So, all of this will, you'll be reintroduced to. Now, I remembered this morning that I had not included exponentiation. Exponentiation just means raising to an exponent. So, I made up my own problem here, kind of on the fly f of x equals x plus 3, find f squared of x. What f squared of x means is that you just take f of x and you square it. So if f of x equals x plus 3, we're going to take x plus 3 
and square it. And that will give us X plus three times X plus three. Now in high school, some of you learned the FOIL method and some of you did not. Um, it has fallen into disfavor politically because you can only use FOIL if you're, you're multiplying two binomials. These are binomials. There are two terms in this set of parentheses, which makes it a binomial, and two, um, two terms in this set of parentheses, so it's a binomial. You're multiplying a binomial times a binomial, so you can FOIL F O I L which means you take the first terms, x times x, that's x squared. You take um, the first term times the last term, that's the outside, and make that x times 3 or 3 times x. And then the two inside terms. And then the two last terms so that your answer is x squared plus 6x plus 9. And because these prob this problem is a polynomial, this is just polynomial multiplication, and you were introduced to this in beginning algebra. Um, the way we do this now is a little different we take the first term of the first binomial and multiply it by the second binomial. Let me put a kind of a barrier there. Then we take the second term of the first binomial and multiply it by the second binomial. Now this is the way you would multiply any polynomials. So we're just using that method. Now we distribute the X, we distribute the positive three. And what this gives us is X squared plus X times three, which is plus three X plus three X. Three times X is three X. Three times three is nine. So we get the answer x squared plus 6x plus 9. Now, if you know the FOIL method, feel free to use it. If you don't know the FOIL method, what I'll be using in this class is the distribution method, but you get the same answer. OK, we're going to do a whole lot more of polynomial multiplication. So don't worry about it. You'll get it if you haven't seen it in a long time. But we are going to move on now to a college algebra topic. Woohoo! Composition of functions. I was struggling when I was a college algebra student with a mnemonic device that is something that would help my memory to remember the order of this because the order is backwards. Let me show you what I mean by that. This is a new operation that uses an open circle in the middle, a raised open circle. Now, first a note, f dot g of x means you're going to multiply f of x times g of x. And this is function multiplication.
F circle G. Kind of looks like the word fog. F circle G of X means this. It means that the X goes into the G <clears throat> and the resulting G of X goes into the F. This is going to equal F of G of X. Now, how would I remember that? And then because when I was young and still, zombie movies are probably my favorite kind of movie. When I just want to do something brainless, I watch a, a zombie movie. OK, and what I pictured was this. This is my mnemonic device. You have to come up with your own. But what I have pictured was this. Here's an F. And it's a zombie. And it's sneaking up. So here are its hands. Nasty hands. It's sneaking up on a, an innocent little girl, G girl. Who is eating a cookie? The X is a cookie. Switch to the next scene. The little girl and the cookie are in the stomach of the zombie. And if the zombie could be smiling, I guess he would be. That was how I remembered it. Whatever is behind is the zombie eating whatever is in front. Here's George. Say hi, George. There you go. Now, that's just the way I remembered it. So, F of G of X. That is F circle G. Let me write it bigger. F circle G of X. is F with G of X put in for every X. And G of F, G circle F of X is G with F of X put in for every X in G of X. So of course we have to know what f of x and g of x are. And here they are. So if f of x equals negative 10x, I'm writing big for a reason. And I first have to find f of g of x. Then if I put g of x in here, it's going to go in there. So I'll have negative 10 times g of x plus 15. Well, negative 10 times whatever g of x is plus 15. Let me look and see what g of x is. It's 5x plus 7.
So all I have to do is distribute the negative 10 into 5x and 7. Negative 10 times 5x is negative 50x. Negative 10 times positive 7 is negative or minus 70 plus 15. So f of g of x, which is f circle g of x, is going to be negative 50x minus 70 plus 15 is minus 55. Yes. I do have a calculator. I almost said 65 though, and I knew that wasn't right. So there we go. One polynomial munching on another polynomial. Whatever is in back becomes the shell, okay? For the action that's taking place. F of G of X just puts a G of X in where the X is, that's all. And then you write down what G of X is. And then you do what you already know how to do, which is multiply. Multiply and add. That's really all it comes down to. The hard part is translating. Okay, now we're going to find G of F of X. Let me write it over here. G of F or G circle F of X is G of F of X. So if G of X is 5X plus three, then G of F of X is going to be five times f of x plus three. Now, so five times whatever x is, f of x is, plus three. So I have to find out what f of x is. f of x equals negative 10x plus 15. So negative 10 x plus 15. So now I'm going to do distribution. 5 times negative 10x and 5 times 15. That'll be negative 50x plus 75 plus 3. So G circle F of X <clears throat> equals negative 50X plus 78. I don't know how many of you have had Ms. Olson as a math teacher. Uh, math professor, but she likes to say fog and golf for these, which is her way of remembering. With me, it's zombies. With her, it's words. I hope that doesn't say something about my character. Let's do it again just so you can kind of pick up the rhythm. Oh, one more thing. You're being asked to find the domain. Well, let me tell you. Let me erase this.
this is a polynomial. I'm going to call it a poly. This is a polynomial. This is a polynomial. This is a polynomial. Polynomials are absolutely the easiest math objects, math things to deal with. All polynomials have exactly the same domain, the entire x-axis. And the most common way of writing that is negative infinity to positive infinity. This is the interval from the far left side of the x-axis to the far right side of the x-axis. This is the domain. The domain of everything in this problem is negative infinity to positive infinity because I chose polynomials to work with. You will be working with other things, but that's in the future. Okay, another way of saying negative infinity to positive infinity is all real numbers. All real numbers. Now, you're lucky, I guess. When I was your age, for some of you, when I was in, uh, um, we took college algebra in high school. Some of you have had it in high school. Um, we would get credit taken off. Minus one point, minus one point for writing real with a small letter because it's a proper name of the real number system. Just remember that. When you see the word real in math, it doesn't mean, is it like a table, does it really exist? It's not like that. Real means in the real number system. And real is a proper name, should be capitalized. But they just don't do it anymore. Oh well. Here we are again. We're going to do the same exact thing. except you do have an x squared, which will make things a little more bothersome. We're going to find f circle g of x. We're going to find g circle f of x. OK, so. I'm trying to find a really good way to write this. Um, f circle g of x equals f of g of x. Now what I always try to do is come directly above this. This just helps my memory. And write out what f of x is, but leave myself room to write. OK, so. That's x squared minus 1. So that's going to be g of x squared minus 1. And g of x is 2x minus 2. Now there is a formula for squaring a binomial, but personally, I see very little reason to memorize it. 
because 2x minus 2 quantity squared is just 2x minus 2 times 2x minus 2. And then don't forget your minus 1 that was already there. And you can FOIL or you can do it the way I'm going to do it, do this multiplication. I'm going to take this 2x and multiply it by the second set of parentheses. And then I'm going to take this minus 2 and multiply it by the second set of parentheses. And then try not to forget my minus one. Okay, 2x times 2x is 4x squared, and 2x times minus two is minus 4x. Now minus two times 2x is minus 4x, and minus two times minus two is positive four. I'm saying minus here instead of negative because that way I don't have to worry about changing symbols. It's all right there. This is a minus two, doggone it. And minus two is really negative two. So you're really doing negative two times two X, which is negative four X, which is the same thing as minus four X. And I'm going to forget my one while I'm doing all this talking. Okay, that's good. Now, I will have four X squared. These are like terms. I subtract four X's, then I subtract another four X's. That means I've subtracted eight X's. plus four minus one is plus three. And that is what f of g of x equals. Okay, now I'm gonna go over to the other side. Oops. And use basically the same method. No. Let's do G circle F of X is going to be G of F of X. And then above it, I'm going to write what G of X is. It's two X minus two. So that means I'm plugging in f of x right here, minus two. And f of x is x squared <clears throat> minus one. Now I'm going to distribute, that is multiply the two by the x squared and by the minus one. That will give me two x squared minus two, and then that minus two that was already there. So the answer here is going to be two x squared minus four. So g of f, g, g, 0f is g circle f of x is going to equal this. 
Notice how much easier that one was. Okay. Now it seems to me that this next problem is going to be a whole lot easier. Why? Because we are doing the following. I am not just finding f of g of x. I'm finding f circle g of four. So this is going to be f of g of four. All I have to do is find g of x with x evaluated for four. g of x is x squared minus 4x minus 5. This is called a quadratic trinomial. Remember those? Didn't you love those? All right, now I need to find g of 4. See, right there, g of 4. So g of 4 is going to equal 4 squared minus 4 times 4 minus 5, which will be 4 squared is 16 minus 16 minus 5. Well, 16 minus 16 is 0, so it looks to me like g of 4 equals negative 5. So all I have to do is find g of, that's negative 5. Well, all right, f of x is what? f of x is 4x plus 4. f of negative 5, therefore, is 4 times negative 5 plus 4, which will be negative 20 plus 4, which will be negative 16. And I have a feeling they only asked for one thing, and that was g of f of 4, so I did f of g of 4. If I put negative 16 in the answer box, I would have gotten it wrong, 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 because I didn't read the instructions. Oh well, it happens to all of us. Now, this is all they're asking for right here. So let's do that. G of F of four is just going to be G of F of four. All that means is I have to evaluate F of X for F of four. And I think I already know what that is, right? Did I already do that? No, I didn't, but it's gonna be really easy. F of four Well, first, f of x, according to this, is 4x plus 4. Now, f of 4 is 4 times 4 plus 4. That's going to be 16 plus 4 which is 20. Therefore, what I'm looking for is, let's write it down here where there's more room, G 
of 20. Okay, so since, well, I think I, ooh, I don't have plenty of room. So let me erase that arrow, that big old ruby arrow there. And let me write G of X equals X squared minus 4X minus 5. G of 20 is going to be 20 squared minus 4 times 20 minus 5. Okay. Here we go. Parentheses. 20. Parentheses closed. I hit the X squared button. That'll give me 20 squared, then minus 4, parentheses 20, minus, <clears throat> minus 5, enter. Yay! And that's 315. So that would give Give me the right answer. If I do the right problem, ooh, I get the right answer. Imagine that. Okay, and that's one of your homework problems as well. I leave that up to you. We are not going to get out early today. This is a function that consists of four separate points. This is point one, point two, point three, point four. These are just four completely separate points. They're not even um, hooked up. You know, they're not even lined up. They're not connected with lines. There you go. They are just four isolated points. And notice that every X coordinate goes to a, y, a different Y, that is, it goes to only one Y coordinate. Four doesn't go to five and six, it just goes to five. One only goes to negative six, negative five only goes to negative four, and five only goes to negative five. That makes it a function. Not that that's particularly important, but it is too because we work with functions most of the time. I am, uh, there's a lot to learn about inverses and it won't be till the next to the last week of the semester that you learn it. But this is just an early baby step into inverse functions because that also is an operation on a function. All right, here we go. I want to find if this is f of x. I want to find the inverse function of f of x, and that would be called f inverse of x. It doesn't mean flip it upside down. It just means do this. You're going to have your four separate points. Four, five is going to become five, four. Negative uh, one, negative six is going to become negative six, one. Negative five, negative four is going to become negative four, negative five. And five, negative five is going to become negative five, five. This is the inverse of that. 
there's nothing harder than that. You just switch the X's and the Y's. Same thing here. Suppose you have this equation. This is the equation of a straight line. It's a function. Okay, it looks like this. This is a line that looks like that, goes forever to the right, forever to the left. Not a big deal. I'll keep it in blue. We are going to solve, well, no, no. If this is f of x, and remember that y and f of x are exactly the same thing, then a kind of a baby step way of finding the inverse function of that is to switch the letters and say x equals 4y minus 3. And that's all they're asking you to do. Now that's a very baby step way. When you actually officially start doing this, you solve for y so that you can get y equals. But you're not asked to do that here, I don't think, unless I cut the problem off and didn't put the rest of it. Um, let me show you what you would do if you had to solve for y. Okay. Well, you would add 3 to both sides, so you would get x plus 3 equals 4y. And remembering that there's a 1 in front of the x, you would divide by 4, divide by 4, and divide by 4. These 4s would cancel, so you would have y equals 1 fourth x plus three-fourths. Which means the answer would be that f inverse of x equals one-fourth x plus three-fourths. So if f of x equals 4x minus 3, then f inverse of x is going to equal 1 fourth x plus 3 fourths. That would be the complete problem. I find it hard to believe they would just ask you to do that. But maybe, maybe, because it's a first baby step. Nonetheless, this has been your intro to a college algebra look at things you've done before, except for composition of functions and inverses.